fruit of the Spirit with sowing and growing Christian character. Everybody say character. Character. We want to become more and more like Jesus. Amen? We want to, and if we're going to become more like Jesus, that means I need to spend more time with Jesus. I need to spend more time with his people, with his church. I need to spend more time in worship and in prayer and reading of his word and praise and thanksgiving. Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about peace that passes understanding. I love that scripture. That a peace that passes understanding, a peace can surround us that just makes no sense at all when we shouldn't feel at peace. Have you ever experienced that? I can remember when I got news that my grandfather passed away uh, and it was just a bad situation and I remember beginning to cry and feeling just that burning sensation in my eyes with tears welling up and then all of a sudden I just felt like a peace come across me amen that Jesus was with me that he was going to help me that he's going to minister to me and you know what that's invaluable amen that's important to have So Galatians 5, 22 and 23 again says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, which we already talked about, peace, which we're going to talk about tonight, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And then Philippians 4 and 7, amen, says, And the God of peace, because he is a God of peace, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I, I, I just, the word of God is so encouraging. It's so strengthening. He will keep your hearts and your minds. Amen. He'll keep the things that are daily that we go through and also the things that the deeper things that we go through. Amen. Father, we thank you. We love you again, Jesus. We just invite your presence to minister to us here tonight. Help us, Lord God. Wash us clean, Lord God. Help us to draw near to you. Allow the watering of your word, God, once again to cleanse us, Lord, our hearts and our minds and draw us closer to you. Help us to hear your word tonight, God. Help us to apply it to our lives, God, that we could, Lord Jesus, invest in our life, God, your character, Lord, your word and your spirit, that it would change our hearts and our minds, God, that we would grow in you, Father. And we thank you and we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. So people have said that much, if not most, of the social turmoil of our culture is due to a hunger for peace, which is sought for in all the wrong places. And I think that was probably said a while ago, uh, not even knowing the situations Uh, that are going on today in our world. A lot of times when you look up statistics and you look up polls and things like that, it's based off past things, decades old things, but yet we see that trends continue to get worse. Amen? Things continue to trend, especially in our world, uh, a lot of times towards the negative. And I think that people are hungry for peace. If if you see things going on today, but they're looking in all the wrong places, you can see videos of things going on where people are claiming that they're doing something in peace, but it just doesn't look very peaceful. It doesn't look that they're doesn't look like they're at peace. That they have peace in their hearts and in their minds. So, according to the director of Youth for Christ uh, in New York and New Jersey, and again, these statistics are. A little bit older so I'm sure that things have changed a little bit but they said that in the next half hour 57 kids will run away from home that was figured out 29 children children will attempt suicide 22 girls under 19 years of age will receive an abortion 14 teenage girls will give birth to an illegitimate baby, and 685 teens will use some form of narcotic. Amen. So, and I realize that sometimes they, they put the statistics on one gender or another, but that also means that guys were involved in those choices and situations as well, right? So that means the number doubles. That's a lot of kids every half hour in our world, in our nation. Amen. So instead of the world uh, that we live in being at peace, 
we're really we've got some battles going on don't we we've got some battles going on there are people that are war uh, are at war this is a an article out of the an issue of today um back from the early 90s it says a group of academics and historians have compiled the startling information that since 3600 bc the world has known only 292 years of peace less than one percent 0.08 of this time was in peace and during this period there have been 14,351 wars large and small in which 3.64 billion people have been killed the value of property destroyed is equal to a golden belt around the world, 97.2 miles wide and 33 feet thick. That's a lot of property damage. And that was back in the 90s. And if you've seen anything gone on today in our, in our cities of, of states around our country and the damage to personal property that's taking place and the, and, and, and the amount is in the millions. Amen. People are trying to find peace. They're at turmoil. They're at war. And, and we can see what's going on, and we can disagree with it. We can get angry about it. But you know what? The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So I had better figure out what my part in this is. Amen? And we had better realize that as a church, we need to be praying. We need to be letting the light of Jesus shine through us brighter and brighter. I can have my opinion on it. I can, I can, I can share my thoughts on it. But I had better be doing it in a spirit of love. And I had better check my motive on what it is on when I do that. Because I have to do that. Because just like anybody else, I get upset when I th see injustices. I get upset when I see things going on that, and things changing, and they don't look like they're changing for the better. I understand that. We're emotional people, but we're also spiritual people. And our spirits had better be leading us, not our emotions. Can you say amen? God's spirit had better be leading us, not our flesh. So there's different types of war that people are at in our world today. They're at war with God, they're at war with themselves, and they're at war with each other. And I believe that just the, the battle we fight with the enemy falls in each three of these. But God didn't intend that for us. We were created to worship. Amen? We were created to worship. In John 16 and 33, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So testings and trials will come, but God still says we can live in peace. Turmoil might be all around. The storm might be brewing and blowing heavily. The hail and the lightning and the thunder and the floods might come, but we can still be at peace in Jesus Christ. Matthew Henry, who's a famous commentator of the Bible, said this. He said, when Christ died, he left a will in which he gave his soul to his father, his body to Joseph of Arimathea, and his clothes to the soldier, and his mother to John, but to his disciples who had left all to follow him. He did not leave silver or gold, but he left something better. He left his peace. Amen. So as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, as their Messiah and their teacher, the one they followed for three and a half years, was hanging there on the cross, his intent was for them to have peace. I believe that we need to allow God's character through the power of His Spirit to manifest itself through our relationship with God. That we find our in whether so other people can see it so it can encourage us we need peace in our lives there's a definition found in galatians 22 and 23 for the word peace it means a quietness a rest or to set at one again god wants to take us he wants to take what's broken he wants to take what's been shattered he wants to take what's been bruised and he wants to put it back together again when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, that right relationship with God was broken, right? Amen. And our relationship with others was broken. Immediately, the relationship with God that was broken affected their relationship with others. What did Adam do first thing? He blamed her. Tell me that didn't make it uncomfortable over dinner that night. <laughs> 
sitting around the table. And so, so you think this is my fault, huh? <laughs> Imagine the conversation they had. Right? So, through God's Spirit being manifest in our lives relationships can be set at one again. They can be put back together because that's what God intended to take place in our life. Amen. Paul wrote this in Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 14 through 18. He says, For Christ himself is our way of peace. He has made peace between us Jews and you Gentiles by making us all one family breaking down the wall of contempt that used to separate us. By his death, he ended the angry resentment between us caused by the Jewish laws that favored the Jews and excluded the Gentiles. For he died to annul that whole system of Jewish laws. Then he took the two groups that had been opposed to each other and made them parts of himself. And so he fused us together to become one new person, and at last there was peace. As parts of the same body, our anger against each other has disappeared for both of us have been reconciled to God. And so the feud ended at last at the cross and has brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were very far away from him and to us Jews who were near. Now all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, may come to God the Father with the Holy Spirit's help because of what Christ has done for us. Amen. So here's the three areas, a little bit more in depth, where we're at war. So we need peace with God. Amen? We need peace in our relationship with Him. Before I can attain peace in any other area of my life, I first have to be at peace with God because He wants us to have peace. He's made a way for us to be at peace with Him. A couple of scriptures, Psalm 29 says... The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Romans 5 and 1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. People have mentioned many times, people ask, and they say, how could God, who is so loving, how could the God who you claim him to be allow bad things to take place? We have to remember it was Adam and Eve, that initial sin that broke the relationship of peace that we had with God, right? That's where sin came into the world. So every negative thing, every evil thing, every sinful thing comes from that broken relationship where sin entered in. Romans 5 and 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So from that point until now, right, we have sought a lot of different ways to try to get back that relationship of peace. Jeremiah 8 and 15 says, We looked for peace, but no good came. Ezekiel 13 and 10 says, Because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace. So God established a way. Everybody say a way. A way for peace to come back into our lives. Peace is important. It's not always the most exciting topic to, to teach about or to preach about, but peace is important because peace, how many people have heard somebody mention the word stress in the past seven days? I have. In the past 14 days, in the past 30 days, in the past six months, several times I'm sure that you have heard people talk about stress. I'm sure that people that aren't talking about it are going through it. But what is the antidote for that? It's that peace of God. Amen? Amen. He shed, uh, back in the tabernacle plan, uh, God allowed that blood of an innocent animal uh, to cover for the sins of the people. And even before that, with Adam and Eve, they were covered with coats of skins. And that symbolized that covering of sin, that covering and God's peace. From that point forward, as I mentioned, animal sacrifice was required to keep us in a right, right relationship with God. It was always about the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, right? So there was an atonement. That spotless lamb was offered to the Lord on an annual basement. 
And so God was doing something through that. He was bringing us back to him. He was making a way to restore the relationship and to restore the peace that he wanted us to have. Jesus said in John 14 and 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. We need peace. So we need peace with God. That'll solve that battle between us and him. We need peace with God to restore that relationship. And once we do that, we'll have peace with ourselves. Amen? A lot of people struggle. There's an inner battle going on with a lot of people, with all of us at some point. We struggle with that inner battle. And, and uh, it's for that peace of mind. Now, again, I'm not against medicine, but I do think that there's a, a lot of alternative methods that people are promoting and using for peace in their mind today. Amen? There is. Whether it's for depression, whether it's for fear, whether it's for low self-esteem, anxiety, whatever it is. But God wants us to be at peace with ourselves. But the only way that can happen is if we're living that life that he's given us beyond ourselves according to a power greater than ourselves. And that's his spirit. So when we look for that inner peace or that peace of mind, there's a couple things we need to understand what it's not. Because I think sometimes we, we think, well, if this was absent, I would have peace. Right? But it's not about something being absent. It's not, uh, having peace is not just a lack of hostility. Right? True biblical understanding of peace is deeper than not having a life filled with conflict because we're going to have conflict. Jesus said offenses will come, right? Real peace is peace regardless of having conflicts because we're going to deal in life. In life, you have conflicts. You have situations. Amen. It's not an absence of activity. I just need some peace and quiet. I just need for everything to settle down, for the dust to clear, for the kids to go to bed, or for the phone to quit ringing, or for whatever's going on to stop, and then I could have some peace. We just need to slow down. But slowing down is not the same as having peace. Amen? So real peace is peace regardless of how much activity is going on. It's not an escape from reality. Like a vacation or, or something like that, an amusement park, a vacation, a getaway. Uh, they're filled with people looking for peace. Now, that's where the rest comes, or the quiet, maybe. But real peace is peace regardless of location. 1 Peter 3, 10 through 11 says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it pursue peace so there's a philosophy of life that's founded upon seeking peace if we're going to love life and have good days we have to be seekers of peace amen and that all comes through the prince of peace it was once said that there is no way to peace but that peace is the way. And I think that's the confusion or the mistake a lot of people made. They're looking for that way to peace or that answer to peace when really it's kind of like truth. Truth is a person. Peace is a person. It's Jesus Christ. Because God did not want us to live with that turmoil inside of us. The Bible says he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Because when that fear comes in, what happens? If you had a peace of mind at one time, fear kind of gets rid of that, doesn't it? Whether it's a doctor's report, whether it's uh, what the checkbook looks like, or whether it's uh, what's going on in the news or the community around you, that, can, that fear can come in and really take away that peace of mind. And we can lose that a lot of times because we're tormented by, okay, now what's going to happen? What's going to happen now? 
it, I mean, this is, you know, the, it's, it's, it's on the eastern border of our state. How much closer is it going to come? Where, where is it going to go now? It's been just to the north of us a little bit. Is this going to happen here? What's going to happen to our community? And we can begin to imagine things and work ourselves up. And that's the work of the enemy. I think even with this whole pandemic, it's caused so, a lot of people to fear to the point that they don't leave their homes. And that's not a healthy way to live. Romans 14 and 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. God is our provider. Amen? doesn't matter what it is. If it's eternal, God's our provider. If it's temporal, there's nothing wrong with having temporal things. Our flesh is temporary. Our flesh needs things to keep it temporary as long as possible. <laughs> right? I mean, this is only temporary, but I want it to last as long as it can, so I'm going to need some temporal things, and God's the provider of that. But it's also eternal, so I've got to look to Him for those eternal things. So Paul tells us that the kingdom of God does not exist in those external blessings, but in what God gives us on the inside. That's where the righteousness and the peace and the, and the joy comes from. Remember when Jesus was in the ship? And he was asleep, and they were going across to the other side, and a big storm arose, and the ship began to fill up to the point that water was crashing over, and they're probably trying to bail out the water. And then finally, it's, Master, don't you care that we're going to perish? And Jesus woke up, and he said, Peace, be still. Amen. I think there's a scripture where he says, Be still and know that I am God. So I don't think it was this big demonstrative scene where he, you know, did this great thing with the waving of his arms. I think he just stood up and spoke peace. I mean, he's gentle, but he's strong. And he steps into those situations of that stressful situation of an individual at war with themselves, and he just gives us peace. And that's what God wants to do. Amen. Philippians 4, 7, again, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So it's that peace that comes from Him, and it's beyond our reasoning. It's beyond our understanding. Amen? We may not know the end result, but we can have peace about it. It also tells us that the peace that He gives will keep our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ who is the Prince of Peace. And finally, after having peace with God and peace with ourselves, we need peace with others. Ever have an enemy? Maybe somebody that you had conflict with continually? Maybe even have a heated conversation and, and, and have things kind of go south and just be very, very uncomfortable. It happens because we are one individual among billions, right? And we're all very, very different. And we're one member of a church made up of many different personalities and backgrounds and ways of life. So there's opportunity for that to happen with each other. We are uh, of the understanding that at some point, we're going to have a disagreement with someone. Maybe enemy was a strong word. But somebody that you had a disagreement with. Somebody that you couldn't seem to come to terms with in a situation. I had a conversation the other day about something in my life with somebody just down the street. And I just smiled and replied with a nice reply. Because we obviously had a disagreement, but it didn't turn into a conflict. Because I didn't let it, and I didn't allow it to. I don't know that that was their motive either, but they started the conversation, so I just replied in the best way that I could. Right? 
And sometimes we're going to have disagreements in life with people. If one situation causes us to walk out on God, then we need to question our relationship with God. If a bad relationship or that one situation or, or even a couple situations cause us to walk away from him, you know what? Our relationship has to be based on us and him. And he'll give us peace with him and peace with ourselves so that we can have peace with each other. Amen. It's God's very plain in his word. He says, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the th things wherewith one may edify another. He's talking about relationship with each other. Follow after things which make for peace. Don't instigate. Don't antagonize. Don't be obstinate. Don't try to get the last word. Don't try to always be right. And, but that's our human nature, isn't it? Because we are right. <laughs> and we want everyone to know. And it frustrates us when they don't realize and they try to argue. But that's our human nature. So we have to look back to our relationship with him because God wants us to edify one another. We're commanded to follow after or pursue things which make for peace. So God is not into backbiting. He's not into gossip. He's not into uh, sowing discord, any of those things. He hates it. Amen? 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. He was challenging the Corinthian church to live in peace. And you know what? As long as God continues to wait until he takes his church home, we're going to continue to deal with people. And he's challenging us and encouraging us to continue in peace. Because that's what we should be known for as Christians, right? Having the fruit of God's Spirit in our life. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So we can't really have the unity without the bond of peace. Amen. Colossians 3 and 15, a couple more scriptures, and I'll get ready to close. He says in the, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So God's peace is to rule. It's to have dominion over us in our hearts. James says the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The fruit, again, fruit of the Spirit, the manifestation of God's Spirit in our life, that result, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. That's a lifelong process. And James says, if we're going to manifest righteousness, then we better be a peacemaker. One more verse. We could stand together. Hebrews 12 and 14. Follow peace with some men. Follow peace with those who agree with you. Follow peace with those who compliment you. <laughs> No, no, and no. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Is that convicting? <laughs> yes, it is. Without peace and holiness, we will not see God. Without peace and holiness, others will not see God in us. Amen. So what does peace look like? Does peace look like a painting of a serene landscape and calm waters and a reflection of the mountain and the sunset going down and not a ripple on the lake? Is that peace? It's peaceful. Or could peace be that same landscape only with a Storm and lightning in the sky and maybe just in the background an individual or maybe just some small creature nestled in comfort and peace that everything's going to be all right. Kind of like those disciples when they were in the ship. 
could they have still had peace with the storm going on? Absolutely, they could have, because Jesus was in the boat with them. But he was trying to help them understand that who he was, that he was their peace. It wasn't, he did say, peace be still, and one scripture even says immediately they were at the shore. Immediately they were through the storm. But in other times, Jesus just helps us through it, right? And as long as we know that he's with us and that he'll never leave us or forsake us, we can continue to have peace. And we can allow that peace to manifest itself in our lives and be an encouraging just fruit of spirit to somebody else. I remember a while back, I was up north and we were hunting, and I may have shared this before, but we were hunting on a back road, on a logging road, and we were with a group of guys, and they had another vehicle in front of me, and we had just gotten done, and we were sitting there getting ready to go, and all of a sudden this guy comes down the logging road who didn't expect anybody else to be there and he came I mean he was going like 50 and he was having fun and there was nowhere else to go on this road the the snow was piled high it was only like one and a half lanes as he came around he just missed the vehicle in front of me and then his truck hit my truck in the box side and he stopped and we made sure everybody was okay and I talked to him and you know and we talked and exchanged information and he went on and and one of the young men with me said Man, I can't believe how cool you were to that guy, how, how calm you were, and, and how, you know, like, I would have, you know, you hit my truck, I would have been, you know, making a big deal about a vehicle, and I thought, well, we all lived, it could have been a lot worse, and this can be replaced. You know, God can give us peace about anything, but most importantly, we need to have peace in our relationship with him so that God can work through us to be a blessing to everyone else. Amen? So let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you. We love you, Jesus. And I pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, in our relationship with you, God, to have that peace, Lord, that passes all understanding, that you would help us to trust you, God, with all of our heart, leaning not in our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging you, and, Lord, that you would direct our paths. Help us to know, God, through all things, that you are still on the throne, God. And as long as you're on the throne of my life and you are sovereign in my life, God, I believe and trust trust that everything's going to be okay. And Lord Jesus, even though the world around us might be having all these problems and situations, God, I know that you are still the creator and maker and keeper of all things. And so, Lord God, you will not leave me. You will not forsake me. But God, I just need to allow your love and your light to shine through us, God, as your church. We thank you. We love you. And we give you all the honor and the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Greet someone tonight. Remember, this coming Sunday, there's a holiday.